Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Retro Adventure Wednesday. So glad you could be here with me for Sherlock Holmes, Consulting Detective, The Curse of the Mummy's Curse, uh, or maybe just The Case of the Mummy's Curse. Who's to say? Who knows what the name of this game is? It's been lost to the sands of time. This is a 1991 full motion video game, one of those early multimedia projects based on a board game, a board game that I've spent a little bit of time playing. It's, uh, it's a brutal board game. Um, it's, uh, it's really a, a, a board game that seems to exist mostly to make you feel stupid, uh, by setting you up against a, uh, Sherlock Holmes who you can never beat. So I'm hoping we'll see some of that tonight, but, uh, yeah, glad to be here. Glad to see, uh, Ben, uh, we've got Grayson, we've got Fit over in the chat. Thank you for dropping in. Um, I'm a little late getting started. Uh, because I was watching the first half of uh, The Matrix uh, Resurrection. Um, so if you have any questions at all, let me just say, if you have any questions at all about the first half of uh, The Matrix Resurrection, please feel free to ask them now. Ask them at any point later in the stream. I'm happy uh, to just uh, just tell you everything you need to know about uh, about The Matrix Resurrection. Or maybe it's Resurrections. I'm really not sure. Um, that's probably not a great start on my Jess reveals all about the matrix, but, uh, yeah, just any questions you have, uh, post those in chat anytime because man, I'm hopped after seeing the first half of the matrix, uh, resurrections. I, I literally, uh, are you liking it? It's not bad. You know, I've read a lot of awful reviews. Um, I can see you, Nick. Good to see you. Uh, Tom, I'm liking it so far. Um, yeah, I'm at about the hour. 20 mark or so and uh after reading a bunch of awful reviews uh i think i was primed for something really far more worse than what i've seen so far so that's a compliment uh so yeah yeah, yeah so, so far so good uh good to see you uh nick Matali. yeah i mean it's so far it feels completely unnecessary but at the same time it's like yeah it's not bad you know it's a matrix movie i enjoyed um like roughly 33% of the first three. Uh, why shouldn't I enjoy, uh, why shouldn't I enjoy this new one just as much? <laughs> it didn't need any, you know, in the film uh, seems to acknowledge that maybe whether it need to be made is a, a question worth asking. So I respect that, but yeah, um, turns out uh, bullet time still looks pretty cool. So spoiler alert, bullet time is still pretty cool. <laughs> but tonight we are not traveling forward to the future. We are traveling back to Victorian England and to everyone's favorite prickly detective with a bad cocaine habit, Sherlock Holmes. And uh, yeah, let's just jump right into that and see what kind of trouble we can cause here at 21B Baker Street. I think that's the address of the historic uh, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective Agency. So here we go. All right. I should have backed out of this screen so we can get the full effect. Let's start with Holmes' introduction. So our case here, this is one of three episodes. This is the case of the mummy's curse. Um, and yes, that's right, OSU. The game is a foot. Let's see what Holmes has to say by way of introduction. Yeah. London is not a beautiful city. It wrecked London. Under the soot that covers its buildings is a teeming mass of four million souls trying to survive, mostly off of each other. Mm. You see it in the paper every day. Thankfully, we have the London Times to keep us informed of all these troubling activities with an unbiased eye and razor-sharp accuracy. We find this publication to be of invaluable assistance in our investigations, and I'm sure you will as well. We got that open source intel. Among the forces of evil which run rampant in this city, there are also, thankfully, two groups of individuals who will aid us in our cause. Mm -hmm. As we do, they attempt to right wrongs and restore harmony and civility to the streets of London. The first of these groups is a ragtag association of young ruffians. I call them the Baker Street Irregulars. Not nice, Don't but it's okay. Fool you. They may be scruffy and ill-bred, but yeah. they are on the right side of the law. They can go everywhere, see everything, and overhear everyone. They are my eyes and ears in the streets of London, unquestionably a tremendous asset in our work. Mm -hmm. They will help us in our investigations if they can. The other group is a far more civilized collection of gentlemen than institutions. I call them the Baker Street Regulars. 
They, too, will be extremely useful in our work. At the start of any investigation, do keep in mind that it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Nah. Unwittingly, nah. one begins to twist facts to suit theories nah. instead of theories to suit facts. The people and places to whom I will now introduce you will help us to collect the facts. May we use them wisely. Come. The game's a foot. Ah, he said the thing. He said the thing. <laughs> A3 Becca. Nope, not Sierra game. A 1991 game by... Gosh, I'm not even sure who made this ding dang thing. <laughs> this is actually a, uh, a 2012 remaster uh, that was kickstarted. It failed its Kickstarter and somehow managed to make its budgeting needs <laughs> anyway. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's very exciting. The game is afoot. And just as a flex, um, I don't know how many of you were watching. <laughs> hey, there's Jim Walls. I don't know how many of you were watching Adventure Tuesday last night. But as you can see here, I have a Yankee candle. It's uh, peppermint cocoa. I can smell it. Trust me when I say my sense of smell is completely intact. So uh, that's a big flex on uh, on all the people out there who currently can't smell their Yankee candles. <laughs> all right, let's learn about the regulars. You can smell it from here, yes. Mr. Henry the... <laughs> Ellis is the foreign news editor for the London Times. He is a great reservoir of information of what's happening on the continent. He also has an interest in crime news. Mm. Ellis is always happy to help when he can, but you must be careful of what you tell him, or you might find what you've confided to him in the next day's times. Oh. So these are all of our sources for information we'll be talking about. Look at this guy. Look at that dude. Look at that square jawline and goofy wig. Edward Hall is a young barrister whom you will find on most days at the Old Bailey. He's a cut above the other unimaginative members of his profession. Holmes, don't you think you should explain to them the difference between a barrister and a solicitor? Yes, of mm -hmm. course, Watson. A solicitor handles the routine legal business of our society. If you do not have to go before a court, you will have no need for a barrister. Ah. If you must go before a court, then your solicitor would engage the services of a barrister. Paul, let me throw this out here. He looks like the EMH of Voyager if somehow his coding was crossed over with Scott Bakula. It looks like this is like a Captain Archer Voyager EMH combo going on so here. So Jasper is the chief medical examiner for St. Bartholomew's Hospital. He is London's greatest forensic pathologist. Mm -hmm. You can depend on him for all the technical details that can be obtained from any corpse whose cause of death is in question. Corpse freak. Got it. Ah, oh, Scotland Yard. If the Yard knew how to examine evidence with any skill, there would be no need for our services. Inspector Lestrade is the pick of a bad lot. <laughs> but it is true they may be a source of valuable information. After all, the professional police have methods for gathering facts that are not open to us. So yeah, we, as we investigate, we can visit all these people and ping them for clues. But I don't know who any of them are, so this is a good time this to relearn is the this. the head chemist at Scotland Yard Criminology Laboratory. It is rumored that Murray lives in the lab. He is eternally bent over one of his tables trying to extract the history of a crime from the physical evidence he's been given. Classic. If I can't find something in my own files, I go and examine the overflowing shelves of the Great London Library. It is a wealth of information. Great. Libraries are cool. Porky is not a pillar of society. Porky Shinwell. But he is a man who has learned from his mistakes and is trying to start a new life. Although he is no longer in prison, he is still behind bars. Or shall I say, a bar. <laughs> Charlie Goodwin Holmes. Yes, Watson. Well, the bar in question is the Raven and Rat Inn. Porky is the proprietor. He has been of great help to us in the past, and I expect he will continue to be in the future. Oh, man. You see, this is a great question. Uh, Grayson tagged himself as Lestrade. I would like to tag myself as, uh, as Pike but I'm afraid I'm more of a Murray. Like, Pike is who I'd like now, to be. Now, here is a person who usually gets in the last word. Langdale Pike is a human reference work on social scandal, mm -hmm, especially like on the London scene. He contributes bits of gossip to the garbage papers that cater to an inquisitive public. Quentin Hogg is a crime reporter for the Police mm. Gazette. He is an ex-police inspector who found the environment of Scotland Yard less than stimulating. He has a strong deductive mind and is a very good resource. 
This okay. is a records office housing documents pertaining to births, marriages, deaths, and last wills and testaments. Head clerk Disraeli O'Brien is your contact in the Office of Records. The Office of Records contains legal records, both criminal and civil, as well as state papers. I think you'll find O'Brien to be a walking, or should I say sitting encyclopedia of the office's affairs. Okay, did everybody get all those people? Because we're going to need them later on. My sleuthing tools. I think you'll find these tools to be positively invaluable as you endeavor to help Holmes solve these cases. Okay, so we have newspapers. We have our directory of people we can look up. We have uh, locations. We have a notebook full of clues. We have video scenes. We have the judge. I know that like this wig thing isn't wrong, but boy, it's still just so goofy. Uh, okay, and then we'll gather clue points. It all seems very straightforward. All right, now we know all our tools. Let's play the Ding Bang game. And let's begin a new one. Look at the animation on that pipe. All right. Ooh. With a lantern lit sitting room at 221 Baker Street, Sherlock Holmes slowly takes a pool from his pipe while Dr. Watson, reclining after a bit of tea, peruses a discarded copy of the London Times. What rubbish! What balderdash! You must have read something terribly disturbing, Watson, for you to be so overwrought this early in the morning. Indeed, Holmes. It's irresponsible of the Times to play upon people's superstitions. Ah, you must be referring to the affair of the Mummy's Curse. Mm -hmm. The entire city in an uproar. Three men dead, and they expect us to believe that a 4,000-year-old mummy was the murderer. I'm surprised you haven't taken some interest in this case, Holmes. To the contrary, my dear Watson. I have made some inquiries. Because I dare say I do believe this murderer is a much younger chap. <laughs> I kind of like their Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> I don't need a serious Sherlock Holmes. This level of goofiness is plenty enough for me. So that's all we have to go on so far. Let's uh, let's check out the London Times. Okay. They contain pertinent clues to your cases since the paper has more information than it could possibly fit. Simply scroll through the articles and read at your leisure. Got it. Oh, look at that. Boy, that's just how a newspaper works, too. You scroll one column, you scroll the other. Classic newspaper. All right. Some personal ads. Don't see anything good there. Ooh, sporting live ostriches. Strange event. A sudden gale on the Isle of Man blew off the roof of a stone church yesterday and would have crushed the pastor's house. Hmm. Okay, I'm not seeing anything important here. Drown. On Wednesday evening, four men who were employed in the lifting sand near Glen, near Glen Barriff, was uh, were returning to Bantry when their boat was caught in a sudden squall and capsized. They were drowned. Their bodies have not been recovered. That's a little suspicious. Ooh, there to the editor. Yesterday afternoon, the Lord Mayor unveiled the new statue of Queen Anne. Not important there. Okay, let's see what is important in this edition of the Times. Newspaper. They did live like animals. These primitive screw heads. Um, a murder was committed in Bloomsbury last night, shortly after 10 p.m. Constable Lane summoned them for help. Uh, chief accountant of the bank was... Bah, 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 bah and found the body in his study where he'd apparently been murdered by a blow to the head. Mr. Mason's body was discovered by his wife upon return to her home around 10 p.m. The wife is a key suspect right now. We read the lock horns. Um, the police report only that, uh, I'm sorry, the police report that only the uh, upstairs window, well, wait, only the intruder apparently entered by an upstairs window and judging by the disarray of the study, a struggle occurred in which Mr. Mason met his death. At the time of the crime, as I was brought over to the best detective in Scotland Yard, Mr. Mason is survived by his wife, Rose, and a brother, Cecil. Okay. Some outrage. Oh. Hmm. Handling your paper, my recent discovery, your report's insinuation that I lack the credential to unearth such antiquities is an utter affront. The Earl of Downey, an, an expert in Egyptian studies. Curious. Okay. So that's one day of the London Times. So we have Mason. 
Maybe I should take notes. Is this a note-taking game? Maybe this is a note-taking game. All right. Mason is the guy's name. Good start. Recent excavations in uh, in Egypt. Dr. Ebenezer Turnpool. Oh no, I dropped my pencil. Well, no more note taking for me. Um, Archaeologist Windebank and Weatherby are embarking on a new Egyptian expedition. Dr. Turnpool. Okay, so ah, shortly after nine o'clock this morning. The body of Stephen Lyons was found lying in St. George's Road, South Walk. Work. Short time previously, the deceased, a first officer for Aberdeen Shipping, was seen being led in the direction where the body was found by two women and a man. The body had been robbed, even two gold earrings, which the man had been observed to have been wearing. Two women of ill fame. And a man described as a laborer, but known to be the associate of bad characters, had been taken into custody. Drug administered. Okay. This is like the board game. There are a lot of important clues scattered throughout these uh, these uh, newspapers. Hmm. Man found dead at theater, and that's sure at the Elephant and Castle discovered the body of a man apparently murdered during last night's performance. The body was found after the entertainment and the box, which according to the usher, the man occupied alone. The police have not been able to identify the man who they described as mid-30s, approximately 5 feet 7 inches in height, slight with red hair. He'd apparently been stabbed to death. Anyone who might know anything about this should contact the authorities. There's nothing you can do about dropped pencil. Hmm. Jewels stolen. There are also so many crimes. Oh, archaeologist dead in mummy's tomb. Professor Ebenezer Turnbull. Found dead in the tomb early this morning. In her chamber, worked late into the night. Hmm. Ancient linen bandages were found around his neck. Interesting. Okay. Disaster at sea. Alright, we're getting some leads here. Very good leads. And not leads like in England. I mean like L-E-A-D-S. And not LEDs. None of those things. Okay. Mummy strikes again. Odd beans. James Windebank was discovered late yesterday as he's prepping uh, for the British Museum's exhibit of the newly discovered artifacts of the tomb of Katapet's mummy. Found with linen bandages around his neck. You know, I'm not going to lie, y'all. Linen bandages? It sounds like a mummy did it. Ebenezer Turnbull, Windebank... Weatherby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a man of science and medicine. I must protest these innuendos of murderous mummies. The ancient Egyptians had progressed, but they had certainly not found the secret of everlasting lasting life in the... Oh! Dr. <laughs> Watson wrote that letter. What a, what a nerd. What a nerd. Come on, Watson. Let's have some fun with this. Okay, notebook. Mm-hmm. So let's see here. What happens if we go see Ebenezer Turnbull? Ironically, the doctor isn't feeling well, so Holmes decides to play a visit to the home of the late Ebenezer Turnbull by himself. Dr. Turnbull, he was a strange one, he was. Are you ever at home? Always traipsing about her Lord knows where. May I take a look at his things? Oh, suit yourself. All he had is a big pile of books about Egyptian mummies and a few maps. He was a son of an earl, he was. Mm -hmm. Though you hardly tell from looking at him, poor fellow. Do you really think this mummy thing's what's done him in? Creepy, I says. Creepy, I says. I do, I yeah. do. Okay. How about Witherby or Windebank? That was his name, right? I'm oh, search Holmes' spouse. Professor of Egyptology. Had some difficulty with the Anti Vivisectionist League over the past several years. Mm -hmm. You'd expect that as someone who's into mummies. 
Armed with the information he's discovered both in the Times and in conversations with reliable sources, Holmes sets out in hopes to find a revelatory conversation with Wittebank's widow. James was so thrilled when Dr. Turnbull invited him to join the expedition. He felt he had spent his entire life reading books about archaeology, and now was finally getting an opportunity to go out into the field. Tell me, Mrs. Windebank, when your husband returned, did he discuss the deaths of his colleagues? Of course. Mm -hmm. James was extremely upset. I know he did not believe a curse to be responsible. My husband was a man of science. Okay, that was delightfully unhelpful. Let's see. <laughs> Pardon me. What was the other person's name? Let's see here. So it's Windebank. It was, ah, oh, it's Weatherby and Turnbull. That was Weatherby. And I was like, there weren't two W's, were there? But maybe there were. Okay, let's see here. Weatherby. Let's send the detectives. Hey, Speedy DeBama, good to see you. Weatherby Holmes asks, or Watson asks Holmes, as Holmes, hold on. Weatherby Watson asks Holmes, well, Weatherby Watson asks as Holmes reaches for his deerstalker hat. Mm. I'm very sorry to insist on your moment of grief. Oh, that's quite all right. You know, Andrew and I hadn't been married very long. Long enough to know if he had any enemies? Oh, Andrew was so unassuming. Everyone liked him. Including Mr. Rurubaru? I really loved my husband. I'm sure you did. Oh, English toffee, my favorite. Would you like one? Please. <laughs> Sorry, you'll have to open this yourself. Mm. I've never been any good with these things. <laughs> hey, Sarah Kelly, welcome in. Um, yes, these are the original cut scenes. I think that it's just been sort of the menus are redone, mm. quality of life stuff for Windows 10. It runs really smoothly for what it's worth. Anthony Aburu was someone she just mentioned. Let's go see Aburu and find out what's going on there. Hmm. Holmes hails a carriage and proceeds to Mr. Aburu's home in hopes of a clue or two. If this is an inconvenient it time, does, Zach Maddock. perhaps I could come back, Mr. Aburu. I wouldn't hear of it. Just a bit of a hangover. I've I like this guy. I've plenty worse than this. I'm investigating the death of Andrew Weatherby. You were on the ship with him out of Cairo. Did you happen to make his acquaintance? Weatherby, a most tedious fellow. So tedious, one might want to do him in. Mm. Don't be preposterous. In my condition, I couldn't have done anything of the sort. What condition was that? And I thought you were a great detective. The first night out, a few of us threw a bit of a bash that went on until we docked in London. Did Mrs. Weatherby attend this particular bash? Yeah. She was the guest of honor, you might say. Oh, wow. Hmm. Well, I guess that's something. Let's go see uh, Inspector Lestrade, uh, since Zach Maddock was inquiring after it. Can we mod it so Jim Wells plays Lestrade? I think we should, if someone could get on that. I don't have the, uh, I don't have the technology for that myself. His bulldog tenacity has brought him to the top at Scotland Yard. He's an unimaginative sort who's often out of his debt. Same. <laughs> oh no, Metalli. Smoking. <laughs> okay, first of all, Metalli, uh, through slapping enough uh, stickers, uh, has earned a special, uh, a special metal there so thank you so much metalli and tom thank you as always for getting uh getting the mask in here let's go see lestrade often tedious and the inspector's condescending holmes and watson visit scotland yard well well if it isn't mr sherlock holmes london's most overly praised amateur snoop needing the help of the yard again are you going to stand for that holmes let's just see who proceeds to solve this case watson Inspector Lestrade, my good man, I'm looking into the cause of James Windebank's death. <laughs> I should have known. That murder has brought out every crank in the city. <laughs> I think the professional police can wrap this one up. All the same, could you tell us what you've discovered to date? 
One dead archaeologist, no suspect, uh, no motive. And what of Andrew Weatherby's death? Have you looked into that? I have talked to Captain Ramsey, but uh, we have no leads. Look, I'm not even sure that Weatherby's murder falls into our jurisdiction. And if it doesn't, you're not going to find me worrying about it. As it <laughs> is, I have enough murders to take care of. Too many murders. Hey, good to see you, nap time. Good to see you, kill. All right, welcome, everybody. So glad you could join me tonight for what has so far just been a, uh, a powerfully uh, intense game. Let's see. Who was my... That's the London Times person. It's a barrister. We don't need to talk to a barrister. Hmm. I believe this is the, uh, yeah, medical examiner. Let's see what, uh, what he has to tell us. A migraine sidelines the great detective while he soothes himself with cocaine. Holmes sends Watson to discuss the murders of the medical examiner. Beg your pardon, but could I have a word with you, Sir Jasper? Ah, uh, Dr. Watson, of course. Are you investigating the death of Samuel Sneed? I just finished with him. No, we're interested in <laughs> James Windebank. Ah, the mummy's latest victim, of course. Uh, who hired Holmes for this one? <laughs> King Tut? Oh, <laughs> that's a jolly good one. Actually, we don't have a client on this one. Uh, just for fun, eh? Well, about the only thing I can tell you is that that mummy has very powerful hands. What do you mean? Mm. The trachea was crushed along with one of the vertebrae of the neck. Death was instantaneous. Snap. But the papers report say that the, there were mummy wrappings found round the neck. Uh, just window dressing. Uh, without question, it was bare hands. Yeah. The bruises and the way that the vertebrae was crushed leave no doubt about that. Thank you very much for your time, Sir Jasper. We're very much appreciative. Uh, not at all, Watson. Uh, you will let me know when you've convicted the mummy. Hmm? Beg your pardon? Well, so I can perform an autopsy on him. Would be most fascinating, don't you think? Hmm. Yeah, so for right now, we haven't ruled out that this was some sort of erotic crime. So everyone kind of keeps that on your uh, on your back burner. We could be dealing with a uh, an erotic crime. <laughs> hey, nap time. I've been loving Link's Awakening. I think I'm going to play it tomorrow night uh, around same usual time at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. But so far, I've been loving Link's Awakening. It is just the best. Hey, Chunky Code Monkey. Okay, so... I don't know if we have any good leads going right now. Hmm. Let's see here. What options do I have at my disposal? Oh, uh, maybe my notebook can tell me a few things. Oh, look at this. This is great. Dr. Watson learns from the Times that mummy, blah, 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 blah. Holmes paid a visit to Turnbull's home and learns what he already knew. That Turnbull was the Earl of Downey. Minus 10 points. Great detective visited the house of the late James Windebank. Learns that James didn't believe in curses and considered himself a man of science. Uh, doo -doo -doo. About her relationship with Mr. Urburo, she only admits to loving her husband. Holmes visited Mr. Urburo's residence. There he learns that the man apparently had a liaison with Clarissa Weatherby. Men visited Scotland Yard. Hmm. <laughs> Autoerotic modification is a definite possibility here. I haven't ruled that out. Let's revisit some of these uh, some of these newspaper clippings and see if we see any other interesting clues. Hmm. That's just someone saying, "I like mummies." Johnny Bulldog Trent. Oh, that's a good name. Definitely the butler. Hmm. British Museum's exhibit of newly discovered artifacts. Let's maybe check out the British Museum. Can I go there? Maybe we should go to the crime scene. That's what the detectives do. British Museum. Perfect. Holmes logically concludes that the clues in this case point to visiting the museum. Watson heartily agrees. Are they throwing shade at me? 
Is this the debut of Softlock Holmes? It is. It is me, adventure gamer extraordinaire, Softlock Holmes. Windebank's body was found in the mummy's case. Inside it? Precisely. One of the guards, Henry Witherspoon, discovered it when making his rounds. He noticed that the lid was askew and a hand was sticking out of it. Mm. By the look on his face when he came to summons me, he must have thought that the mummy was attempting to leave its resting place. Some of the guards have been a bit on edge, you know, since the story is about Dr. Turnbull's death. What happened when you arrived at the scene? Witherspoon assisted me in removing the lid. And there was the body of James Windebank. Around his neck was a bandage of linen. And the mummy was missing? No, it was in there too. Underneath poor Windebank, completely undisturbed, not a length of its sheeting unraveled. Who had access to the exhibit room? Well, the room was officially closed yesterday while we set up the exhibit. It says that but there. But the museum was open and we took no extraordinary precautions to keep people out. Can you think of anyone who might have wanted to kill Windebank? None at all. I actually didn't know him very well. He did work for the museum, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, he was with the London University. The university and the museum were joint sponsors of the Ketterbeck expedition. Mr. Johnson, can you think of anything whatsoever that might shed some light on this affair? No. I'm very sorry. I can't think of a thing. I only hope that all this publicity doesn't keep people away from the exhibit. Yes. You don't want murder to get in the way of a uh, museum. Uh, patrons. <laughs> yes, it does have that masterpiece theater vibe, right? Actually, the production values look pretty decent here. Porcupine, did, yeah, Todd Eight Step. You have to look out for porcupines. You have to look out for pterodactyls. Uh, this is uh, this is all very dangerous stuff. All right, I'm going to need um, a little bit more out of Watson here. After all, it's uh, sarcophagus, not sarcophagus. Um, so we need to get this going. University of London or London University. We also have Witherspoon. It's in the regular. Ah, it's the, yeah, we need to talk to the chairman of the university, sending some of your orphan kids that you, uh, let's go nose around university. Places like that give us the creeps they do. All right, well done. Let's, uh, Maybe see what this. Ah, uh, we don't have a wither spoon. Damn. Hey! Yeah, no, Tom, I didn't even deserve that. That wasn't good. It was ripped off from a Simpsons joke, and I don't even think I nailed the delivery, but thank you. Thank you for the pity bit. States the obvious when you recommend a trip to the Egyptology is in order. Commends the good doctor. Okay. Such a tragedy. Fine men all, and such outstanding scholars. I still can't quite get over the shock of it. We understand. Professor, we're looking for background information on these three men so that we can understand how their murders might tie together. Well, let me begin with Dr. Turnbull. Oh. Ebenezer Turnbull was responsible for organizing the Carterbed expedition. Quite a remarkable man, really. This was the first time he teamed up with James Windebank. Classic Professor crossover. Professor Windebank was one of our most popular lecturers. In fact, several of his former students were also eager to accompany him. I recall him saying that he was having difficulty choosing. Weatherby turned out to be the lucky one. Though it seems far from it now, doesn't it? I suppose Smith and Travis turned out to be the lucky ones after all. Smith and Travis? Smith and Travis? Peter Smith accepted the invitation to join another expedition. As for Philip Travis, he was quite keen on accompanying Professor Winderbank. In fact, he became exceedingly upset when Andrew Weatherby, a postgraduate student in the department, was chosen oh. instead. Took it rather personally, I should say. Interesting. So we have a person who had a motive, as they say in the detecting business. Okay, so it was Smith and whom? <laughs> I 
Smith and Travis. That's right. Thank you, Zach Maddock. Having heard Smith's name from Henry Ellis, Holmes travels to the man's residence and hopes the long trip will be worth the effort. Sorry I can't help you, Ducky, but Mr. Smith oh. has been out of the country since the middle of March. He's a good-looking bloke, except for the dirt under his fingernails. Hmm, a clue. <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> These scenes are really charming to me. I love the, uh, I love the FMV. Okay, let's go see this, uh, this questionable person. Oh, man. Apple cranberry cakes. I would kill for an apple cranberry So you've cake. been reading my articles in the Times. I'm honored. What do you think of them? Quite interesting. You've clearly been following the murders quite closely. Who do you suspect? I believe it is the work of the ancient Egyptian god Pumatef yeah. and his goddess Neith. Be serious. I couldn't be more serious. You see, Mr. Holmes, although I am a journalist, I was actually trained as an Egyptologist. I know all about these mysteries. That's why my articles carry the force of truth. And what is the truth, Mr. Travis? The truth is that the Egyptians discovered the secret of life. Okay, we're on to something. What we call science is mere child's play compared to the knowledge they had. Look at this. Do you know what this is? Mummified child? A mummified animal of some sort? A monkey, perhaps? Precisely. <laughs> Write a conversation piece. I've been using it in some very important experiments, which, if successful, will unlock the secret to bringing back the souls of the dead. I've been working on it, Mr. Holmes, using these tanner leaves. Watch. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. That great monkey. Oh, my lotus. Licantina. Licantina? Ra, ra, amen, ra? Ra, ra, amen, ra. It appears that the soul of this particular monkey has no intention of making a reappearance. It's only a matter of time. I know it is. After all, these secrets have been buried for thousands of years. These things don't happen overnight. But it will happen someday. This is my mission. I believe I'll leave you to your work, Mr. Travis. And don't go yet. But let me show you more. Thank you. Some other time, perhaps. Might not be in a bad romance with a mummy. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> is every clue followed by a nod and a wink, basically? Perfectly green walls there left totally alone. That's right. That's how they decorate in Victorian era England said <laughs> princess. Travis is very lonely. Yeah, that's uh that's gonna be hard to find a partner when you have a mummified monkey in your living room. And like there's just gonna be questions. People are gonna be like, hey, what's with the monkey? <laughs> Much to Holmes's chagrin, the man attempts to raise the spirit of a monkey. Someone raise my monkey spirits. It's Eleanor within one second to deduce. I'm here for that QTE. Let's see. Any other clues in yon paper? Hmm. Saad Pierre, of French nationality, was charged with performing with a bear by the name of Clyde on a public highway and causing a crowd to assemble. Man, I'd like to go visit that person. Okay. Hmm. Not seeing anything too compelling. Hmm. That's someone else's death. Man, man found dead at theater. Killed by lightning, classic. Oldenburg jewels stolen. Hmm. Oh no, who do we go see now? Maybe one of our regulars? Who would have uh who would have information about this? Porky Shinwell? What was his deal? Hmm. He's an innkeeper. The rat <laughs> at the Raven and Rat Inn. Let's see, what's uh this one? That doesn't seem terribly useful. That's the gossip guy, right? 
I just want to go see this gossip guy. Because honestly, his photo looks pretty great. Let's find out what's going on. I know only a very little about two of the unfortunate gentlemen. I do recall that Turnbull was quite an eccentric chap. I don't believe he ever married, nor did he take his rightful place in London society. I'm curious. And what of Windybank? A quiet academic sort, as far as I can tell. Same. Married to a woman called Hildegard. There was one spot of controversy that I can recall. It seems a few years back he had a run-in with the Anti-Vivisectionist League. No, but of course. It seems that during a lecture on the advancement of science, he spoke of the autopsy of his own pet. Oh, bad move. Recently move, deceased mistake. Yorkshire Terrier. Well, I can tell you the Times received a great deal of letters to the editor condemning him on hmm. that one. I'm seeing a letter. <laughs> Even one from a Louise Fenwick who threatened to vivisect him. Oh, dear. Well, then I surmise it's Weatherby you know nothing about. Well, now that you mention it, I believe he was assisting Professor Windybank in that lecture series. Hmm. Not super helpful. Louise Fenwick, maybe we'll pay her a visit. Why not? That guy likes uh, likes to spill the tea. Let's see what Louise is up to. The center regular, see what that does. It's blue blinds on top of the likes of us. Well, these irregulars are really helpful. Okay. I'm sorry, but I don't know anything about the death of old... Whatever his name was. Andrew Weatherby. Fact is, I only oh, saw the man. gentleman once, just as we were boarding. And I'll tell you, I resented the first officers questioning us in the matter, and I resent yours. The whole voyage was a disaster from beginning to end. Our accommodations were positively abysmal. I love they her dress. They wouldn't even let us bring Dicky into our cabin. Dicky, her high-strung, distasteful little mutt. How can you say this that? This guy's on the current season of Hawkeye. You know, Dicky is a blue-blooded Yorkshire terrier. Mumsy will be with you in just a moment, Dickie Kins. Yes, Dickie Kins. He's a bit under the weather, you know. That's why we were only able to stay in Egypt for two weeks. Dickie was so disappointed. He so wanted to see the Sphinx. Mr. Holmes is not interested in your incessant whining, Louise. Oh, now I whine, do I? There was a time you thought I had a lovely speaking voice. It's true, Mr. Holmes. He once adored me. <laughs> no doubt. Oh, for the love of God, Louise, spare us your blubbering. More crying. <laughs> <laughs> She's a possible vampire. This is good. They tend to keep company with mummies, so that checks out. They are a half feet shy of a mummy python sketch. Okay, well, are we any closer to the answer? Let's see. Who are our regulars? Who else can we talk to here? Who's Israeli O'Brien? Nominal memory for legal records. That doesn't seem relevant. Ed Chemist. Let's see if we have a chemist situation. Hmm. Let's try this guy. Oh, wait, no. Let's try... The London Times editor. Maybe he has information. It's quite amusing, all this hoopla over a mummy's curse, I must say. Not so amusing, of course, the murder of three Englishmen. Have any of your reporters uncovered anything new? Actually, I've been in Paris the past several weeks. Oh, Just returned la, la. to London on Tuesday. I've had no involvement with the writing of any of these articles. I believe they are all the work of Philip Travis. He's one of our mm. young reporters. For a short time, he was the Egyptian correspondent. Was he sacked? No, no. He returned to London just a few days ago. I gather he was reassigned to cover the case from here because he had some familiarity with the murder in Egypt. Do you know Travis? No. Never actually met the chap, although I hear he's a bit of an odd duck. Thanks for your help, Henry. Anytime. Let me know when you catch the mummy. That's one scoop I'd like to get. <laughs> okay, so Travis is feeling more and more like our likely a suspect so far, I feel like. 
Maybe? Um... Ooh, English Archaeological Society. Let's see what they have to say. This seemed to be a dead end. No one had any information that could help us solve this case. Wow. So that's what happens when you go somewhere that you definitely weren't supposed to. And probably why you shouldn't just flip through the uh, directory looking for, uh, looking for clues. Ooh, let's go see my crop. What did you learn, Watson? Not a thing, Holmes. You learned nothing? Don't get testy, Holmes. There wasn't anyone about. My humble apologies, Watson. <laughs> okay. Well, I wonder if you can revisit somebody and get new stuff. Like, I doubt it. I think we're going to get the exact So you've been clip. reading my articles in the time. Okay, yeah, we've seen this one, right? This is the same I'm thing. I'm honored. What do you think of them? Quite interesting. You've clearly been following the murders oh, quite wait, closely. Maybe. Who do you suspect? I believe it is the work of the ancient Egyptian. Oh, wait, no, this is the same. Hmm. Pettigrew wrote this book over 50 years ago, and there's still nothing better on the subject. Fascinating. Just fascinating. And what can I do for you today, Whitson? It's Watson, sir. Watson, yes, of course. We're interested in what you may have learned about this mummy case. Oh, so these days it's mummies you're chasing down with that fella, Helms. It's Holmes, sir. Helms. This is what I said now, isn't it, Whitson? Yes, I believe you did, sir. Uh, let me show you what I found so far. Uh, this is the bit of linen that was found round the neck of James Windebank. Mm -hmm. I examined it thoroughly and it is quite old, uh, perhaps thousands of years. However, it is not the murder weapon. Are you the linen. of that? Aye. The red the herring. The linen is quite old, but it's not at all strong enough to strangle a grown man. Very interesting, sir. I also found something quite fascinating. Uh, take a look through this glass. Hmm. Uh, do you see those short hairs on the fabric? Oh, no. Look precisely like hairs. Of course they look like hairs. But what kind of hairs? Monkey they're hairs. They're human hairs. They're dog hairs. Now, uh, look at this. This piece of linen was found round the neck of the victim on board the ship. Well, his name was Leatherby or something. Uh, it is also quite old, and on it I found more hairs. Sport more hairs? dog hairs? No, my dear man, monkey hairs. I've not yet been able to identify the precise species, but it's just extraordinary, isn't it? Quite. But what do you think it all means? Well, I'm not the sort who likes to jump to conclusions, Whitson. But I can assure you that neither of these bandages were the murder weapons. Yeah, it feels like we're dealing with some sort of monkey dog. I think you're right, Speedy. Oh, and Tom redeemed uh, trivia time, so. Werewolf? Werewolf. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. <laughs> All right, so we have... Uh, Six questions from Trivial Pursuit Karma. Flex my brain meat and get them all right. Since I'm doing so well at this mystery, my brain is uh, probably moving quickly already. St. Croix, St. John, and St. Thomas are what part of US, what U.S. territory? I'm going to say the Virgin Islands. Who's never been Batman? Ben Affleck, Christian Bell, George Clooney, Val Kilmer, Adam West. Let me run those questions, that question by you one more time. Who has never been Batman? Ben Affleck, Christian Bell, George Clooney, Val Kilmer or Adam West? I think the answer there is going to be Ben Affleck because these cards were printed before uh, the Ben Affleck Batman movies. Uh, but uh, it's kind of funny the random fake answer they put in there turned out to be true eventually. I remember the Shoshone tribe appeared on Golden Dollar Coin in 2000. Sacagawea, Buster newspaper feature first appeared in the New York world in 1913. Comic strips? What piece of farm equipment is this? Thresher? It's a picture of what? I don't know. Uh, who is the only major leaguer to hit a walk-off inside the park Grand Slam? Hank Aaron, Roberto Clemente, or Joe DiMaggio? Roberto Clemente. Okay. Virgin Islands. Ben Affleck. He was Daredevil, it says. Second way, a crossword puzzle, combine, and Roberto Clemente. So we got four out of six. Not bad. Good run. Good run. Hey, way out stuff. Okay, so while we were doing that, did one of us happen to solve the mystery? Did anyone solve the mystery while I was 
doing that. Dog and monkey here. So we know somebody with a dog, and we know somebody with uh, with a monkey. Man, I am at a loss here. Let's go back to the papers. Whoa! It's a sticker party. Actually, let's put a button on that. We have a Jim Wall sticker party. For the next minute, you can slap stickers for free. Just hover over the video window and slap away. Oh, it's a real sticker party now. Look at all those stickers. Wow. Goodness gracious. What a celebration. We have so many Jim Walls's up there. We have GLaDOS's, we have Navi's, we have Link shaking his uh, buttocks. We have Roberta Williams, we have me. Uh, just so many wonderful things. Look at them, they're still coming. Happy Holidays. We have Excuse Me Princess. All right, these will peel off in just a minute. What do we know so far about this murder mystery? We have that jerk of a grad student who has a monkey, has a jealousy of one of the professors. We have a woman with a dog, but what kind of motive does she have? Man, oh man. <laughs> Why people keep asking me to excuse them. Sorry, princess. Uh, let's see here. All right, they're all going to peel right off. And then we can get down to business. Bye, Jim. Okay. Police report that the intruder apparently entered an upstairs window. That's just an unrelated murder. Hmm. This is just about as impenetrable as the board game. It really is. Yeah, the board game is just this uh, difficult. Perhaps Hubby's framing the wife and dog. That's not a bad theory. Hmm. Lions murdered? Ugh. You don't think it was a serial shaver on the loose, do you? A horrible serial shaving gone wrong? Okay. I am honestly not sure what to do. Let's just go before the judge and wing it. Oh, I meant to go back to my, uh, my directory here. Who haven't we talked to out of the regulars? Let's see what his deal is. Let's go to the police gazette. Now the thing what Hey, take care, Kill. Thanks for dropping in. List of the Eastern Empress. Now I'm not saying it has anything to do with the mummy murders, mind you, but it was a bit out of the ordinary. Mm. What was Hog? Akram Pami, for starters. He's a well-known importer. He is for a price, a considerable price by all accounts. He can acquire whatever one's heart desires, mm. be it jewels, art objects, or even wild animals, if that's what you fancy. Maybe it I'd is. I'd say he was on board that ship to transport something very valuable. The presence of one high-powered importer on a London-bound vessel is hardly reason for suspicion. Right, oh, but Abdullah al-Saad was also on board. Oh, yes, the well-known agent for the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. You mm. never miss a trick, do you, Holmes? Well, whatever it was what Farmy was carrying, I'd say it was something those Turks wanted to get their hands on. <laughs> yeah, the accents are a bit mixed. Does Holmes know how to sit in a chair? Yeah, I mean he's he's no he's no Commander Riker, um, but you know he tries. Let's see this Akram Fami. 
The mist seems to rise from the Thames as the men cross a bridge on their way to meet with Akram Fami, a handler of historical relics. Hello? Is anyone there? Mr. Fami, are you at home? Ah, oh, beans. Apparently so, Watson. Look. Oh, what ghastly business. Everyone will assume the mummy has struck again. Hardly a plausible assumption. This poor fellow has a knife in his back and not a scrap of sheeting about his neck. Mm. How very observant, Holmes. Ring up Scotland Yard. This case is simple enough for them to solve. You've solved it already? Elementary, my dear Watson. Obviously, it was the butler. Butler? What butler? Exactly my point. A man as wealthy as Akram Fami would always have a manservant about him. After the foul deed, this one obviously beat a hasty retreat. <laughs> well, I guess we solved that murder. <laughs> we did it. Okay, so uh, the absence of a butler was all the clue we needed. Holmes knows nothing of Al-Sad. He's eager to accompany Watson to his home. Perhaps the gentleman could be of service to him. Well, Holmes, I checked in with Mr. al Saud's manservant and... And you discovered that Mr. al Saud was not at home. But however did you know that? Elementary, my dear Watson. There it I is. I noticed some crumpet crumbs from the corner bakery stuck to your lapel. You haven't been gone long enough to stop for tea and interview anyone at length. Most observant, sir. <laughs> you pig, you absolute pig. <laughs> I always like when Holmes just, uh, just bullies Watson a little bit. Who's Edward Hall? A young barrister at Old Bailey. What can a barrister do with this? Sorry, fellows. I don't mean to be brusque, but I am too occupied at the moment to concern myself with these so-called mummy murders. Perhaps if the Whoa. mummy solicitor were to contact me, then perhaps I would consider defending him. Wow, this is a great opportunity to pause for a second. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tawajia, for uh, for raiding in. Welcome in, raiders. So glad you could be here. Let me offer a shout out here. Thank you so much. There we go. Ooh, playing Fallout 4 tonight. What are you up to in Fallout 4? Um, are you just uh, building camp? Are you uh, are you doing quests? Uh, what's uh, what's up with Fallout 4 tonight? And welcome in, Raiders. I'm Jess. I uh, I stream retro adventure games every Wednesday night. Uh, we're playing tonight Sherlock Holmes, Consulting Detective, Curse, Case of the Mummy's Curse. We're trying to solve uh, a triple murder that right now the primary suspect is a uh, Egyptian mummy. <laughs> hey, Trevor. How's Belmont? Cobra, la, 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 la. Oh, man, I haven't seen G.I. Joe the movie in far too long. Settlement building, keep them safe and happy. Nothing wrong with that. I guess camp is more of a Fallout 76 kind of thing. I forgot they were settlements in Fallout 4. I need to go back and play some uh, Fallout 4 at some point. I played it all the way through when it first came out and haven't really revisited it since. But thank you so much for the raid. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. If you enjoy these sorts of uh, retro-style games, this one's from 1991. Mm -hmm. And full of delicious, um, <laughs> delicious full motion video. Uh, feel free to drop a follow. Hey, thank you so much, Sally C. Welcome into the crew. Let's go visit Porky Shinwell down at the Raven and Rat, the local tavern. Let's see what kind of dirt he knows. Hmm. The consulting detective is nearly flattened by an intoxicated patron stumbling from the end. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> Queen Moose Mouse, that's a great name, too. Welcome in, Queen Moose Mouse. Thank you for the follow. There was a couple of blokes in here just a fortnight ago. Mm, what fortnight? The Eastern Empress. Never seen them before. Haven't seen them since. One was a swarthy fellow. Arab, unless I miss my guess. Mm. The other was an old English gent. I overheard him say something about a bird and later caught the name of the ship. Hope that helps you. Care for a drink, yeah? Thank you, Laura Lee. Thank you so much for the uh, for the follow. Yes, technically a fortnight's uh, 14 days, but I'm going to assume he's talking about the popular Battle Royale shooter. <laughs> oh, goodness. Let's see here. Uh, who do we have that does... Let's, this is the record house, right? 
That's births, marriages, and deaths. We need, like, maybe shipping records? Records department. Ah, maybe this is who we need to go see. Well, Holmes, it appears we're out of luck. The clerk yep. told me that O'Brien is off on holiday. Perfect. Yes, this game did have a DVD release at one point. Okay, who's H.R. Murray? Chemist doesn't seem very useful at this point. But then again, I also have uh, no leads. What was the shipping company? Hmm. Well, I'm really struggling with this mystery. It really does remind me of the board game this is based on. Yeah, it was Empress, right? Yeah. Which I don't see. Hmm. Vegetarian restaurant. Let's go there. And actually, let's sit in a regular there. Glad Spain ignorance when asked about the vegetarian restaurant. A few shillings and a cake or two from Mrs. Hudson's jogged their memory. The smell may have sick, but we asked about your case anyway. Bunch of blank stares. Uh, I was hoping the clue was at vegetarian restaurant. Roberto Vanilli. I wonder if uh, Samuel uh, Manilli is listed under the M's. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. Shipping companies. <laughs> Let's just go to the concept of shipping companies. Here is a passenger list you requested, sir. Ah. <laughs> Did you hear the sound of those uh, very realistic uh, horns from the boats? Here is a passenger list you requested, sir. Felt like somebody's printing something out with a dot matrix printer in the background there. Here is a passenger list you requested, sir. Okay, so if that's the passenger list. Here is a passenger list you requested, sir. There aren't many people we haven't spoken to. Hmm. Ah. Oh, wait, that's just Inspector Lestrade again. Well, well. We've already seen that interview. Where to now? Any of these people we haven't interviewed? No. We've seen all these people. Hmm. Oh no, do we go to the judge? Is that a horrible decision? Oh no, we're presenting our case! Oh no. Well, here it goes. We're about to beat the game. The Queen's Court now stands in order. <laughs> oh. Going for the world Mr. record, Hertz, that's right. I understand you've been looking into the mummy murders. Yes, my lord. Tell me then, who was Ebenezer Turnbull's murderer? <laughs> it was Inspector Lestrade. <laughs> Twist. Okay, who murdered Ebenezer Turnbull? Uh, bad move. <laughs> man, that was a bad move. Oh, man, that was a bad move. Okay, Turnbull, we're going to say, was murdered by... Turnbull is the first person to die. We're going to say that... Um... We're going to pin that one off from Fami. Terribly sorry, gentlemen. That is not at all correct. 
You're summarily dismissed until such time you can correctly and without fault present your evidence. Furthermore, for wasting the court's time, you've been docked 50 clue points. <laughs> Should you decide you're close to a solution, may certainly exercise your approach to the bench again. Oh, man. Yes, the judge knows the, the murderer. It's just a question of whether we do or not. Yeah, the, it sounds like the judge is responsible. This is a really good point. Okay. So let's see here. Let's go through and look at our notebook and actually try to figure something out. <laughs> let's see what notes we have. Okay. Boy, this has been an awful investigation so far. Okay. A mummy's our first suspect. Turnbull was the Earl of Downey. Hmm. Maybe Mr. Aburu? Murdered Weatherby? Maybe Aburu's Weatherby's killer. Gain <laughs> clue points for being a very good boy. I don't know. I wish there was crafty. That's how you used to level up your uh, deduction skills. Okay. Windebank's body was found in the mummy's case, a bandage of linen around his neck. The mummy was also there completely undisturbed. They learned that Windebank worked at the London University. <sighs> Hmm. Let's try to pin it all on Travis. Let's see what happens there. Okay. Hear ye. Oops. Mr. Holtz, I understand you've been looking into the mummy murders. Yes. This is how you Lord. solve mysteries. Tell me then, who was Ebenezer Turnbull's murderer? And what makes you so certain? What was Travis' motive for killing Turnbull? <laughs> <laughs> Terribly sorry, gentlemen. That is not at all correct. Okay, we're getting closer. Terribly sorry, gentlemen. That is not at all correct. Wasn't it Sherlock Holmes who said something like, once you eliminate every uh, <laughs> every impossibility, only the only thing that's left is the only possible... Whatever that phrase goes, that's basically what we're doing here in real time. <laughs> there you go when you eliminate what the judge says no to whatever remains however improbable must be the truth exactly <laughs> this is impenetrable just impenetrable hear ye, hear. okay I understand you've been looking into the mummy murders. And what makes you so certain? What was Travis' motive for killing Turnbull? <laughs> Terribly sorry, gentlemen. That is not at all correct. Out of one in three on that one. <laughs> it's great to watch the internet's great sleuth. <laughs> Soft like Holmes in action. You know it. All right. Well, let's just try a little bit more trial and error. Here Mr. Holtz, I understand you've been looking into the mummy murder. And what makes you so certain? What was Travis' motive for killing Turnbull? And what of Andrew All Weatherby? Right. <clears throat> Who <Thanks>. murdered him? <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Who murdered Weatherby? Let's see. Um, I'm going to say a burrow. Terribly sorry, gentlemen. That is not at all correct. <laughs> ah. This right Holmes could be Moriarty's shoeshine boy. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe Holmes is behind it. All right, let's just 
just brute force this thing. Mr. Holmes, I understand you've been looking into the mummy murder. There are only so many yes, names in the directory. What makes you so certain? What was trapped? Wait. Terribly... <laughs> I forgot the answer. I'm doing great work here. Uh, just racking those points up. Here... Okay. Mr. Holmes. Really I nailing it here. Been look and what makes you so certain? What was Travis' motive for killing Turnbull? And what of Andrew Weatherby? Who murdered him? Let's see. Positively <laughs> incorrect. The dog lady. I'm afraid you haven't done a good enough job of putting your brains to the task. The dog lady's not a bad idea. Let's try that velociraptor. Okay, we're we're going for a high score here. Okay. Mr. Holmes, I understand you've been looking. And what makes you so? And what of Andrew Weatherby? What was Who her name? Him? Let's see here. It will leap out at me. Fenwick. <laughs> Positively incorrect. Why don't I'm you just tell me you who murdered? Done a good enough job of putting your brains to the task. Oh my lord! This is unbelievable. How are we so bad at this? Or more specifically, how am I so bad at this? I guess is the answer. To... Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Todd ain't step. That is, uh, that joke from Seinfeld is 100% one that gets quoted around our house more often than you would, uh, than you would expect. Why don't you just tell me what movie you'd like to go see? Um, let's see. Yoldi Cheshire Cheese. Maybe that's where the answer lies. I mean... I don't get it. <laughs> Clearly, just not uh, not figuring this out at any level. What in the world am I supposed to do? Hey, there's someone named A Quiddle. <laughs> get it? A Quiddle. Hmm. There's Stella Mummy. Oh, that's... How do we go past this? It's Stella Mummy. Well, I thought, you know, if her last name was Mummy, that someone had mentioned the murder steer and she might be of some help. Watson explains to the incredulous Sherlock Holmes as he gets out the door. What did you learn, Watson? Not a thing, Holmes. You learned nothing? Don't get testy, Holmes. There wasn't anyone about. My humble apologies, Watson. <laughs> I was so sure that that was going to be our culprit. Let's see. I mean, for real though, who did these murders? Oh, we got to spend some extra time Mr. Holmes, stands. I understand you've been looking into the mummy murders. Yes, my lord. Tell me then, who was Ebenezer Turnbull's murderer? Yeah, like I've visited literally everybody that's been mentioned. And what makes you so certain? And what of Andrew Weatherby? Who murdered him? My own brother, Mycroft Holmes. Okay. Okay. This is this is spiraling out of control. Mr. Holmes, I understand you've been looking into And what makes you so And what of Andrew Weatherby? Who I don't know him? that we know anybody else. That's the problem. Terribly sorry, gentlemen, that is not at all correct. Hmm. Wow. I don't know if there's going to be space in this hourglass for a four-digit number. So I'm curious to see what's about to happen in a few minutes. 
I don't think we know anybody else. Did we visit all of our regulars? We talked to that guy. The barrister didn't have anything to do with us. We talked to, I guess, let's go to the library. Here it is, Holmes. Egyptian mummies are embalmed bodies preserved to facilitate their resurrection. Many mummies have been found, and they are almost always the bodies of pharaohs. The mm. pharaohs believe that one day their bodies would be brought back to life. See History of Egyptian Mummies by Pettigrew, London, 1834. Very good, Watson. Peter Pettigrew, eh? Is that someone I can go visit? He is the son of John Pettigrew. Watson points out to Holmes for the seventh time in his many minutes. Okay. I had absolutely no information pertaining to this case. I thought not, Watson. It appears that we've wasted our time. You boob. You absolute nincompoop. Yeah, this whole game being set to the Benny Hill theme would definitely help. Okay, does anyone... We wasted a lot of people's time. Oh my god, haven't we? Okay, we talked to H.R. Murray, didn't we? No, I guess we didn't talk to the chemist. Maybe the chemist has the answer. Pettigrew wrote this book oh, over 50 years ago, and there's still nothing better on the subject. Fascinating. Just fascinating. And what can I do for you today? Yeah, that's the clip we saw before. Legal records. Yeah, this will be great. Well, Holmes, it appears we're out of... Okay, yeah. Out of luck. Oh, Will. Mr. Turnbull apparently left what little he had to the Egyptology department at London University. And Windbank left everything to his wife, Hildegard. What about Weatherby? Ditto. Everything was left to his wife, Clarissa. Although being such a young chap, it hardly seems that he had much to leave at all. Is this mystery solvable if you have the right information, or is it a leap that a person can't reasonably make? It makes sense to the writers because they are unquestionably legal substances. You know, this is based on the board game, and there, in my experience, a lot of these mysteries really are just like, you know, if you can get inside the head of the person writing it, you might be able to make the same leap they did. But then what the game, what the board game does is like after you're done, like you calculate how many total moves it took you. And then it reveals it took Sherlock Holmes three moves to solve this. And like oftentimes, like if you can solve it in 15 moves, you've really knocked it out of the park. So every time at the end, it's just like, well, Sherlock Holmes figured this out in three moves. And then it tells you what he did. And his approach doesn't even make sense by the standards of the ludicrous ways that Sherlock Holmes uh, solves mysteries in Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's novels. I mean, it's just literally, he would have to be some sort of psychic uh, <laughs> being to have solved these. But every um, every game, you just end this like, ah, oh, I've solved it. I finally figured out this mystery. Um, and then at the end of the game, it's like, yeah, well, you still lost because Sherlock Holmes got it by just like looking at somebody and, and deciding that the dirt on his shoes uh, indicated that he was secretly a man who faked his death 30 years ago. So, yeah, the board game is pretty cheatsy. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, who had dirt under their fingernails? That's a great question. Fingernail dirt is always a, uh... Always a big question in these sorts of Sherlock Holmes moments. <laughs> That's a good s screenshot for future use. <laughs> Argued your case and failed. I can't believe the auto mod didn't catch that message, Nick. Uh, but no, the monkey, uh, the monkey doesn't appear. Unfortunately, it's one of our suspects. <laughs> Let's see here. Let me. Um, you know what I think I'm going to do? Just because I'm curious at this point. <laughs> I mean, I don't know of any other leads we have right now. 
splash of dirt comes in the lower end. That's where the roads are poor. So there's more clay, less brick. Yeah, exactly. That sort of logic, Trevor of House Belmont, is is your classic uh, Sherlock Holmes solution. Um, should I just Google the answer and see what happens? Like <laughs> just like plug in the right answers and uh, and call it on this one. I mean, I don't know. Let's see. Curse of the. Oh, wait, no. Case of the mummy's curse. Walk through. Let's see what we get. All right. Hmm. Oh, well. This is interesting. Gang, we just cheated. And, uh... And now I know all the answers, and it's really something else. <laughs> murder, she wrote out a dog murderer. Yeah, I mean, why doesn't this game offer an option for a dog murderer? Okay. Mr. Holmes, so it turns out I understand you've been looking we were overthinking what makes it. You so and what of Andrew Weatherby? Who murdered him? I thought this was going to be several different murders. So, you say Travis killed Turnbull and Weatherby? Yes, I believe he did, my lord. What was his we motive cheated. to kill <laughs> Okay, Weatherby, Mr. Trevor, Holmes? this is a very good point. Technically, I cheated. Um, so, but that brought all of you down with me. This has got to be the answer, right? Ah, revenge. The oldest motive in the book. Mary James Mr. Windebank. Travis seems to be quite a busy fellow. What made him kill James Windebank? Well... You've done an admirable job in resolving this mystery. I'd say you're on a par with just about any other armchair detective out there. I would suggest, however, that you rethink this case again, thereby improving your sleuthing skills. That's it? I don't get, like, a game over? My word, dear oh. Holmes. Perhaps we are in the wrong business altogether. I think I will ring up the university immediately and see if we might enroll in a detective course. <laughs> Holmes got this in 35 points. It took us 840 points to pull it off. Let's see how Holmes uh, explains the whole thing here. This is going to be his logic for how he solved this. Let's, uh, let's tune in and see how he did this in 35 points. Well, Watson, I believe this case is solved. And for your information, it was not the mummy. Come, come, Holmes. I never thought for a moment it was the mummy. Of course not, Watson. <laughs> However, the murderer and the mummy did have one thing in common. What's that? They both were the only ones present at the time of the murders, except, of course, the victims. You still uh -huh. the obvious, Holmes. Ah, but it is seeing the obvious that is important. First, I saw no reason to assume that we were dealing with more than one murderer. Secondly, the locations of the murders limited the number mm -hmm. of suspects limited them the first murder was in egypt the second on ship in the middle of the sea and the third in london you call the entire populations of london and egypt a limited number of suspects no no watson we had to you find moron. someone who is in egypt for the first murder on the ship for the second and in london for the third. Oh, but of course according to the newspapers the eastern empress was in bombay at the time of ebenezer turnbull's murder so that eliminated the ship's crew as suspects okay Thus, I needed the list of passengers who boarded the ship at Cairo. It was our visit to Jardine Mason and Company that provided our first critical clue. From it, I learned that Philip Travis was a passenger. I then learned that Travis was the chap who reported on the first murder. He became one suspect, mm. but I had no motive. Clarissa Weatherby, who was also at the scene of the murder in Cairo, was another possible suspect, since she appears to have had a bit of a dalliance with Mr. Uruburu there on the high seas. Mm -hmm. So I had found her motive for the murder of Weatherby, but not a motive for the murder of the others. Then whom did you eliminate? Mrs. Weatherby. Her hands were not strong enough even to open a jar of English toffee, True. let alone strangle a grown man. Oh, that was a good clue. What of Travis's motive? It seems that Travis was a student in the Egyptology department at London University and had studied under hot. James Windebank. He wanted very badly to be chosen as a member of the expedition, but Windebank mm -hmm. turned him down. Instead, Weatherby was chosen and Travis was furious. Oh, look how so furious there you have the motive for two of the murders. And what of his motive for the murder of Turnbull? 
Evidently, Travis had written a vicious article questioning Dr. Turnbull's credentials to lead the expedition. Turnbull's response was quite harsh, probably powerful enough to drive an odd duck like Travis to murder. This is very true, very Velociraptor. Impressive, Holmes. Elementary, my dear Watson. Maybe she was just faking being unable to open jars. I mean, this is a really good point. Okay, so the logic of that kind of tracked, I will admit. That like wasn't completely out of the out of left field, but what rough? Okay, let's see what happens if we literally just go to the judge. No, gentlemen, you haven't done a thorough enough job of investigating yet. Do continue your sleuthing. What do you mean? Okay, so let's try to do this in the efficient Holmes way and see what happens. So Holmes first went to the shipping company, right? Is that what he told us? Should be a randomly generated person each Here's time. A passenger list you request. Okay, so we get the passenger list. That's true. I mean, you would never guess that it was the same person in three places rather than more than one person. Unless you just like, we're trying to think what would be a really like crazy way for this to turn out. Let's see. So who was it that was with Mr. Abutu? It was Larissa Weatherby, right? So let's go see her. Okay. I'm very sorry to intrude on you when you're... Okay, so that was one of the solutions. And then... From there... Did he visit Travis? Okay. So you've been reading my articles in the time. Yes. All right. I'm sorry, gentlemen, what? but it seems you will have to turn up a clue or two more before I'll judge this case. <laughs> okay, so we just have to click on the newspapers, maybe. Who else do we need to go see in Holmes's solution? <laughs> Sheldorn, he is a bewigged bastard. You're absolutely right. Okay, who else was it we had to go see? But you can't beat Holmes. No, I don't think there's going to be any way to beat Holmes here. Unless just scrolling through these newspapers does the trick. Maybe that's the secret. Maybe once I've scrolled through the newspapers, it will have thunk that I have done enough investigation in as we call it. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So now can I go to the judge? I'm sorry. Okay, where else do we need to go? Let me, let me peek here at the quick solution. Uh, okay, you must visit Henry Ellis is the other, oh wait. Huh. Right, let's see if I'm gonna restart this again and see if we can go through the solutions in this walkthrough and get the ultimate quick answer to this. Okay. So it says Henry Ellis, the shipping company. What rubbish. Okay. What a there. You must Exit. Okay. Henry Ellis. Who was Henry Ellis? Oh, okay. It's quite amusing, all this. Okay, so we visited Henry Ellis. Now we have to go to Jardine, the shipping company. Oh, it's under S for shipping companies. <laughs> Speed run 18 minutes and 27 seconds. Hey, take care, Velociraptor. Thanks for dropping in. 
Yeah, Sheldorn, I think I would have done exactly the same. This is a frustrating game. Here is a passenger. Okay, there's that. And then it says, Andrew Weatherby, and we should have enough to go before the judge. That seems like very little information to work on. Let's see what happens when we beat Holmes' score here. Okay. I'm sorry. Ah, the walkthrough lied to me. Oh, wait, London University is the last place we have to go. But that's going to take me over Holmes' score. There's literally no way, if this walkthrough's correct, to beat the score that Holmes has posted. You've got to be kidding me. Hear ye. What a bogus game. Mr. Holmes, I understand you've been looking. And what makes you so certain? What was. And what of Andrew Weatherby? Who murdered him? So. You say Travis killed Turnbull. Ah, revenge. The oldest motive in the book. This Travis seems to be quite a busy fellow. What made... Well done. All right. I applaud your deductive skills. You will make a fine detective for Scotland Yard one day. However, you will have to do much better if you wish to match the sleuthing expertise of Mr. Holmes. Pardon my French, but that's bull hockey. <laughs> There's no way to get an audience with the judge and still be at less than Holmes's score. He uses the Baker Street Irregulars. Do I do have access to the Irregulars. This feels like it could be shenanigans. Bad, I dare say. We're not too far off, are we? I mean, that does use fewer points. Okay, let's try that. That's our move. Okay, we're gonna try this. This is good, this is good, this is good. Okay, Holmes cheats, accept your fate. Okay, watch this. Watch this drive. Um, so we're going to go see Henry Ellis. Okay, we're going to Go to the London University. Okay. We are going to send an irregular to the shipping company to pick up. <laughs> we stole it. Nuts. Okay, this is the move, I think. I think that's only going to give us five points total. Let's see. And then Weatherby is going to be our last stop. I think this will tie Holmes, if I'm not mistaken. So. There is a way to tie Holmes by seeing a regular. I'm guessing none of these people would talk to our orphan children. So this is probably as low as we can get it. I'm very sorry to. Okay. Now let's go before the judge and we'll tie Holmes and see what happens. Hear ye, hear ye. Hey, G. Germain. Good to see you. You're court. right. It's not a Perot game. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes consulting detective is like, who's line is anyway? The points are made up and the scores don't matter. But well, that feels Mr. accurate. Holmes, I understand you've been looking into the... And what makes you so certain? Okay. What was Travis' motive for killing... And what of Andrew Weatherby? So... You say trap ah, revenge. The oldest this Travis seems to be quite a busy fellow. Okay. That is extraordinary sleuthing. Why, I do believe you may have matched Mr. Sherlock Holmes' solution. It's seven percent solution. Indeed. That's all I get for doing it. Absolutely perfect. I'm quite sure we could not have done any better. I can't do any better, but you can try to do better. Is it possible to beat you? Okay, that's the new question. So, begin a new game. Can we do more with irregulars? Is the question. So, let's try seeing a direct, uh, an irregular to um, Henry Ellis. Okay, so they couldn't see him. Let's try seeing an irregular... 
I'm sure the weather's bees won't talk. Offered some treats, but could barely open the tin. Is that sufficient? Maybe that's sufficient. Okay, let's start this over. Uh, begin a new game. Okay, let's see if this will allow us to beat Holmes. What? Okay, this is going to be our attempt to beat Holmes. Which, again, would have taken some sort of mystical powers to divine on our own. So we need to see Henry Ellis. Okay, exit that. Then we need to send an irregular to the shipping company. Okay. Then we need to send an irregular to Weathersby. And they couldn't get into the uh, university earlier, so we will still have to do that part of the investigation. Now, let's see if we can go to court, if we have enough evidence. I'm sorry, gentlemen. No, okay. It seems you will have to turn oh, did I do the wrong weather beat? Oh, no. Did I? Hmm. I think I got the right weather bee, weather bee, didn't I? Oh, I went to the Shelly first. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. Okay. Let's see if that puts anything in our notebook or if it's just a useless visit. Oh no, okay, so you'll even find out about the 10 if you do that. So let's just make sure. Can we go to London University? Let's go to Henry Ellis. And then let's send the irregulars here and I bet the judge is not going to let us proceed how many points are we going to be at 30 oh wait isn't that Holmes's score already no gentlemen okay you have to visit Weatherby's okay so what we've learned is if the only four places you have to go are the shipping company Weatherby's uh Henry Ellis at the newspaper and uh, the London University. Their regulars can only do the shipping company. All the others require the detectives to go personally, which means the best you can do is tie Sherlock Holmes. Um, and even that would take such a feat of deduction that no one could possibly do it without a walkthrough. So there it is. <laughs> this is a game where, much like the board game, you could never possibly beat Sherlock Holmes. But, wow, wasn't it fun trying as we played Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective? You know, by way of summary, I like the, the vibe of this game. Like, I think for a Sherlock Holmes game, the full motion video works well. I think this approach of using, like, the directory to visit places and, uh, you know, the tools that Sherlock, you know, scouring the newspapers, all that sort of stuff is, is pretty good stuff. But the mystery is a little too obtuse, at least too obtuse uh, for someone who's as acute as I am. Uh, so with that regard, it is very difficult. Um, but Judge, you did better than Holmes himself. You must have cheated C's and ports him to play Shaq Fu. You can make it down to 26 in, uh, in the original PC release. Thank you, Sheldorn. I mean, I wasn't fishing for compliments there. Uh, but, you know, uh, I was just trying to triangulate uh, a little bit of humor. Um, uh, oh, man, I left, that left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, um, all right. So let's see here. Um, I think that's it for this game. 
I think we just nailed it, y'all. I think we really had a successful run of this. It really proves why this game is considered such a classic and why people love it and stick with it to this day. So, I'm... Oh, hey, there it is. Thank you, Nick. I was wondering where my deserved dad joke fits were. <laughs> Thank you so much. Add it to the beaten list. Yeah, add that one to the beaten list. We did it with uh, with only our clever thinkingness and cleverness. Uh, but thanks for joining me tonight for this very weird, not so great game. Um, what I can tell you is, I'm going to be back tomorrow night with a better game. I'm going to be back playing a little bit more of Link's Awakening for the Nintendo Switch. We've been having a ton of fun with that. I'll be back at 9:30 p.m. Eastern uh, tomorrow night with uh, with that. Please join me. Uh, I would. Uh, I'd love to see you there. And then. Christmas Day Night, which is to say the night of December 25th. I have a really uh, fun stream planned that I'm super excited about because it was um, on Christmas Day 1986 that I received from Santa Claus uh, my first personal computer, a Tandy 1000 EX. And with that computer, um, I received a game that as sad as it is to say out loud, um, really changed my life. Uh, with that computer, uh, I received a copy of King's Quest II. Played it, fell in love with it. It started a lifelong love of not just Sierra games, but adventure games in general. So to celebrate 35 years to the day since the first time I ever played King's Quest II, I am going to, around 9.30 p.m. on Christmas Day, uh, Eastern Time, uh, jump in and replay King's Quest 2. Uh, some, some fun 35th uh, anniversary celebration for a King's Quest Christmas. Hope you can drop by and celebrate with me, but if you have better options on the table, like spending time with loved ones, please be sure to do that instead. Bring the eggnog. Thank you, Sheldorn. But I'm excited to revisit it here all these years later and see what sort of fun we can get into but for now. Um, it's important that we launch the perfect raid. And I think the perfect raid is tonight going to be to my good friend Cobra Commanda's cha uh, channel. She's a terrific streamer. I know a lot of you follow her already. If you don't, be sure to. She's playing Parasite Eve, a fun Christmas game uh, tonight. Uh, plays lots of retro adventures as well. Plays a lot of games on uh, original hardware. Um, hopefully you'll join me on the other side of that raid. But for tonight, Thanks for joining me for Retro Adventure Wednesday. It was a pleasure, and uh, I will see you around. Drop a follow. Drop by our Discord. Uh, there's a link to that below. And, uh, yeah, I will see you on the other side of the raid. Good night.